So what is work in progress and how do we as Scrum Masters address it? Well, work in progress is a very simple concept. You're doing stuff. How much stuff are you, are you doing at the moment? How many discrete items are you working on in that sprint backlog? That's your work in progress. Okay, it's the things you're actively working on today or have started and maybe put to one side while you wait for something to happen. Okay. So the WIP limit, work in progress limits that you'll hear about are how many items can come in to your backlog? You know, how many items can come into a particular column on your scrum board if that's what you're doing? And this is an important idea. The more things you have in progress, the more context switching you're likely to begin with. Okay. So as a Scrum Master, what you're doing is trying to limit that number. If I have six members in the team, I may only say, depending on the team, it might be three or four in progress. It might be six or seven, but it's not going to be 12 or 18 or a big number because the more things you have on the go, the more chance of distraction, the more chance that people are going to waste time and effort working on something that they don't need to. Okay. WIP is an incredibly interesting area for a Scrum Master to play with. What's the right number? And you'll often get asked that. I've got a team of this size. What's the right number? It's so dependent on that team and the work they're doing and the environment that they're in. There is no right number off the bat. There's no formula to work this out. I have rules of thumb. I'm sure over time you have or will develop those rules of thumb yourself. But what we need to do is look at that team, what works best for them. Some teams, it will be they pair, so the number is fewer than there are people in the team. Some teams don't pair, so it's likely to be around that number or larger. Okay? But what we want to do is keep the work in progress at a level where people stay focused. So they work on an item, and if they think it gets stuck, instead of putting it to one side and assuming somebody else will unstick it, the team come together and say, OK, this is blocked. How do we unblock it? Okay. Maybe that's as a team, they need a conversation with a stakeholder. Maybe they need to talk to a manager in a different area. Maybe they need to take it to the Scrum Master to get it resolved and they can't legitimately work on it, in which case it stays there. It's flagged as blocked and a new items brought in. So we do allow some wiggle room because the realities of working in large organisations is some stuff doesn't move quickly. Don't put it back. Leave it there. Say we were working on it and we've deliberately decided to not work on it until this problem is resolved. And when that problem is resolved, it will be the next item we continue with to get it to done. Okay? This means that we say we're going to start something and we work on it as actively as we can until it's done. What we don't do is put it to one side, ignore it, it waits, it gets delayed. Okay, And at some point in the future, we remember about it and pick it up and carry on. Okay, Because if you do that, there's a high likelihood that the work you did previously is waste. It's no longer needed. It's the wrong thing was being built or it was being built in the wrong way. Things have changed and they've moved on. So we want to keep it front and centre. Work in progress becomes a very interesting concept, a very important concept for teams as a whole to get a handle on. And as a team, you will discover how best to limit that number for yourselves. If you've got to this point in the video, I hope you've enjoyed it. If so, a like would be appreciated. If you want to hear more from me, more answers to questions that maybe you've got in the Agile world, please subscribe to the channel. And if you've got a question that you really want answered, drop it in the comments. I promise we'll get around to it. Thank you.